Oh, it's the day of the cell phones. <laughs> Clearly. I had uh, forgotten at the beginning of this to actually pull up my talk. Wouldn't that, be fu wouldn't that be funny if it didn't show up? Then you'd have to get what's on my mind. <laughs> Which basically is what you're going to get anyway. So, um, there we go. So, the first thing I want to bring up is that, that they chose to change some of the lyrics. I was okay with the lyrics the way they were, but they, in their teen group, decided they wanted to change some of the lyrics and make it more appropriate. And how many of you know what a wiggler is? How many of you don't know what a wiggler is? Most of you. So what they were talking about is um, this idea, wigglers, because I'm, I'm a real, you all know I'm such a sports fan, wigglers, <laughs> but what you don't know is that I literally was a ball boy for the 76ers. Hey, Philadelphia 76ers, when I was in high school, I was a ball boy, which meant I was on the sidelines, and whenever a ball went out of bounds, I'd run and catch it. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> run and catch it. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you tell I'm rehearsing Sissy Boy? I was doing something yesterday, and I went, I was never this much of a sissy. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. So I revised it. But I would run and I would catch the ball and, and then I would like throw it back to Will Chamberlain or, 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 or Matty Gukas or someone. And these guys we knew. I mean, we talked to. I mean, Matty Gukas gave me a, a medal that I wore for like years. Uh, I, I, I wasn't really into the basketball, but they looked great. Um, so anyway, back to Wigglers. So Wigglers are the guys, the people that sit behind the, uh, the net, the hoop that thing there, right? So that as soon as somebody from your opposing team, whoever's playing against you, <laughs> throws the ball up, they all go, whoa, and wiggle to distract the person from making their mark. And they're called the wigglers. Now our teens know this, because I use this term in, in, in CPR and in my work, and there's a lot of wigglers in the world, aren't there? How many things in your life show up that really you could call a wiggler that just distract you from what it is you say you want to be doing? So that's what that, that, that term is that they were singing back. And so the, 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 the theme of the song is just love. Hey, I love you. You know, that's it. I love you. I love you. So really it's the theme of our center. Love only and get rid of the wigglers. So the title of my talk today is uh, Here's What I Know. And, but it's not here's what I know, K-N-O-W, it's here's what I know, N-O. And what I want to ask you today is, what is it in your life that you need to say no to? We talk a lot about all the stuff that we want to be and say yes to and who, I, who we are, who I am, but I don't often talk about what do you need to say no to? No is a very, very powerful word when you mean it, when you say it and you live it. So, um, and it was so great because Sydney did her, her uh, meditation based on the Ernest Holmes quote, there's a power for good in the universe. It is bigger, now I wanna, wanna read this to you. I'm gonna remember, there's a power for good in the universe bigger than you are, bigger than any of us are, and you can use it, right? Now, there's this misunderstanding when we say it's bigger than you are, that somehow there's something separate from you, bigger than you. That's not the case. When we say there is a power for good in the universe, bigger than you are, what it means is bigger than the mind in you that thinks it's somehow separate or smaller or less than this power, this amazing power. Because the truth is there's a power in the universe, and this is my version of this, there's a power in the universe and you can use it because you are it. That's how that really goes now. <laughs> There's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it because you are it. So let me just tell you what the word power means. All right. The word power... <laughs> that was somebody telling me that they, the service looks good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, this is what the word power... <laughs> You know what? I've always wanted to be very global. You should all just text right now. Just tell everybody where you are. Pinterest or whatever those things you do. You say, I am at the Global Truth Center. 
tweet, do all that stuff. So power, this is what it means. The ability to produce an effect. The ability to produce an effect. And then under power in the dictionary, it says mental efficacy. How many of you know what efficacy means? How many of you don't? How many aren't willing to say they don't know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not saying I don't know what that means. I, under, I hear the word. Efficacy. So efficacy actually means the ability of the mind to produce an effect. That's the efficacy. So if you have mental efficacy, it means your mind has the ability to produce an, a result. And in ministerial this week, I believe it was Helen Valu who had Buddhism. Is that correct? Yes. So... Uh, Helen Valu is one of my students from Toronto, so she's in our room virtually every Thursday night. And her quote was from Buddha, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. So my question to you today, one of the many questions I have for you today, is this. Not only are you aware that your mind can produce an effect, are you aware of what effects your mind is producing? <laughs> really? More people. Text me when it's over. Okay. So, are you aware of A, the fact that your, <laughs> that your mind... Let me turn the sound off. Hold on. Is that Delaney? Did you just text me? Really? Did you want to say something to me? I didn't say something. What did you say? I can't read. <laughs> okay, back to me. So, so um, first you have to be sure whether or not you believe that your mind can actually create an effect with your life. How many of you believe that? Okay, 100% of the time your mind is creating the effects of your life, yes or no? A hundred percent of the time. What about when you're not thinking? Still, Still right? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, why? I love it. You got very vocal and then you got less and less as I went on into this question. So, so the reason why is because it, your mind creates whether you are conscious of it or unconscious of it. So regardless of what you're doing with your mind, it is always creating. So your job, the efficacy that you have, is your ability to actually consciously decide what to do with your mind. That's the great teaching we are a part of. And that's what these teens have learned. That their mind is creating their experience, the way they use their mind. You want to go around complaining about the way the world is? Guess what you get in return? Everything to complain for. About. Right? You want to go around thinking that the world is just love. Hey, I love you, I love you, I love you. What do you think you get in return? Love. You will always get exactly what your mind is equal to. That's the way it works. So it's about becoming conscious of this. So, here is what I know. Very often, we allow things in our life that actually aren't serving us. How many of you think there's something in your life right now that maybe isn't serving you? Okay, that's like almost the entire room, except for Jet, who hasn't had time yet to, to have anything that doesn't. Right, Jet? How old are you? Nine. Okay, so at nine, perhaps he doesn't have anything that's really derailing him at the moment. And there never will be, right, Jet? He, he nodded. But you and I, since we're, most of us are a little bit more than nine, <laughs> that was very funny, Will, when you said that. <laughs> Most of us have things that are still in there derailing us that we're not saying no to. And when you don't say no, guess what you're saying? Yes. yes. You can't just pretend it's not there. You can't just, you know, turn a blind eye and go, well, that's all going to work itself out just fine. No, because it is working itself out in your mind as whatever belief you have underneath it. So, you know, somebody said to me this week during, during BODS, they wrote me a personal email, and they asked me, they said, 
First of all, they were very excited because they had lost like 12 pounds. And they said, but I'm, I'm a little concerned because I lost these 12 pounds and I wasn't really focusing on it. And I said, I said, okay, explain that. And said, well, our, the whole program so far has been about not focusing on any of that stuff, but focusing on the truth. I said, that's how it works. What are you going to focus on? I said, remember, in one of the first few weeks, I told you, say no to dieting. This is not about dieting. Say no, because dieting has struggle involved in it, and we want to get rid of the struggle. So it was really fascinating, and I'm loving doing BODs and seeing how it is working. If you're taking BODs and you haven't lost 12 pounds yet, don't worry. The minute your mind is equal to it, your body will answer. That's the way it works. And that's true with any part of your life. So it's not just the body that is this, it's the body of your life, success. The minute you are equal to success, you will be successful. The minute you are equal to love, love will show up. The minute you are equal to creativity, things will show up for you to give your creativity. I had a very interesting email this week asking me if I would consider being a keynote speaker at this conference. And it came just as in that morning I was saying, I want more opportunity to speak out in the world and I'd love it to be out of this country and this happened to be out of this country. So I wrote right back. So the minute you say yes or no to this, and now here's the big part, no to wasting my time doing things that I no longer want to do. How many of you would like that? Yeah. Yeah. Just say no. I feel like Nancy Reagan. Just say no. <laughs> to all of those things that you no longer want to do. Now, I know some of you may be sitting here going, I can't say no to that. I have to do that. And my answer back is a two-word answer. Says who? Literally, says who? Well, says you, because you bought into it some way. There is such power in the word no. Have you ever said no and really meant it? I mean, really meant it? Because I think most of the time we say no with the loophole of maybe. How many of you do that? Yeah. And so it's more like, no. <laughs> and then you wonder, is the universe listening? Did they hear me? Because I, I want to make sure that, I used to do that. I used to be the great loophole king. You want to get that, Bob? <laughs> Today is just like hysterical. Did I text you by accident? Sorry. I used to be the king of saying to myself, I would say no, but I would always have that thing in the back of my mind saying, but maybe if something happens, I can change that no to a yes. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be resilient, but I am saying this. In this moment, it needs to be no. And if the universe needs it to be something else, it will come along and give you the opportunity to change your mind. But first, have a mind to change. Have a decision to change from. Have a decision to come from. So if the decision is, this is what I want in my life. How many of you know right now, if I, could, if I gave you, you're all going to win the lottery. That, that, what was that one that just got won? Like 1.6 billion. billion. Do you ever play that game with your mind and say to yourself, what would I do if I won that lottery? The good news for me is, my answer is, I wouldn't do much different. I would just do it a lot easier. You know, but I wouldn't change. I would not suddenly, oh, I'm done with ministry. I'm rich. <laughs> Everybody would be like, what the hell has he been saying all these years? And why was I even listening? <laughs> no, but I mean what I say. I love what I do. I love being a minister. And I love all the creativity that goes on around here. But I also know that there are things to say no to. And that brings me to habits. And that brings me to some of the addictions and some of the things that are going on in our lives. And I gotta tell you, um, when we hear the word addiction, we, we, we suddenly, or at least I do, suddenly think of addictions and I can list addictions. But you know what? There is one addiction that trumps them all. And I think every single one of them, every single one of us has a little touch of it that we could do well to look at. And that is the addiction of bad, wrong thinking, where we just think things that really do not serve us. And when I say addiction, I don't mean that that's all we do, because most people who are addicted don't only do the thing they're addicted to 24-7, unless they've really gotten to a place that's, that's, that's unmanageable. Most people are still doing their addictions 
and then sort of living, and then they go back to it, and then they live and they go back to it. Do you see what I'm saying about the mind? I know the truth, and then I don't, and then I know the truth, and then I don't. So if we were willing to say a big fat no to thinking anything other than what supports me and mean it, how do you think your life would change? If we were to say, here's what I know. Now here's the thing about the word no, N-O. It's actually within the word no, K-N-O-W. One word, two ideas. And it sounds the same, doesn't it? Here's what I know. So yes, I can know the truth, but within that, I better be saying no to what I don't want to know. So again, I'm going to ask you to really bring it forward in your mind right now. What is it in your life that you need to say no to? It may be a person. It may be a place. It may be a thing. It may be a line of thinking. It may be a habit. It may be the past. You may need to say no to the past and just say, okay, the, all that happened and now here I am and it's a brand new day. Principle is not bound by precedent, nor am I because I am principle. So what you need to say no to. So I want to close with something that's been happening in my life. So I've been putting this show together that opens this coming Friday night. And, well, thank you. Save it for Friday. Um, and there's nothing like living through your whole life in an hour and a half, but living through your whole life over the last few months, that there's nothing like doing that and bringing all this stuff up. And what's interesting is, as it comes up, I get to deal with it. I get to see what I think about it. I get to see if there are any beliefs. I had no idea that this show would actually be a few months of spiritual adventure to really bring things up and say, how do I feel about that? How do I feel about, let me go right where he is, how do I feel about my father? How do I feel about my mother? How do I feel about my brothers? Y'all got them. We all have things in our life that we let lay there and we don't know whether or not we're saying no or yes to them, but basically we're just allowing them to do what they do. And so as I was going through the week, um, there was a moment when uh, I had a friend in from Seattle who helped me one day and let me run through the whole show. And she, she, she was very positive at the end of it. And she said, but you do know you have Nicholas Nickleby. Reference didn't work for you people. Uh, <laughs> that means it was long. <laughs> and she said, it's very long. You have to cut about 20 minutes out of it. And I was like, how do I cut 20 minutes out of my life? And so it was interesting to be able to say, what was I going to say no to? Who was I going to say no to? Who wasn't I going to include? And then I just got the best spiritual message I ever got in the entire journey, which was, I get to say no to my life. Anything that came up to this point, I get to say no and just say, okay, you happened and you're not coming front and center on this one because you're done. I'm okay with that. That doesn't need to be, that's not who I am. And even though most of this is not who I am anymore, but the journey is to get me to where I am right now, I can invite you, even though I don't think any of you or many of you are going to just pop up here and do your one man or one woman show about your life. Some of you probably are at some point. Um, I would invite you to take a look at your lives and see where you need to bid a big old no and say, that's not representative of me and I don't need, I don't need to project that anymore. I don't need to be that to be my story. Y'all have stories. Every single one of us has our story. And most of you are telling your story over and over and over and over again. How many of you feel that you still have a story that you tell that you wish you'd stop telling? <laughs> right? It's so indicative of most of us. There's this story that we stop telling. Now, the thing is, say no to your story. As soon as you hear yourself, start to take Heather aside and say, you know, Heather, I, oh, no, never mind, I'm not telling you. You have to be willing to say no to whatever it is you don't want to be communicating because at all times you are communicating to the universe. 
And the universe is saying yes. And there's the flip side of this. Whatever you are not saying no to, the universe is saying yes to it. So, again, just take a deep breath. Now close your eyes. Get very comfortable. And I'd, just like, I'd like you to just listen to my voice and allow me to take you back to your birth. What day was that? What day was that that I was born? What time of the year was it? What must it have been like then? Where was it? What country? What state? What city? Who was there? Do you know who was there? But I know the most important thing is I was there. I know you were there. So let yourself be right there. Take a look at that child. Take a look at that perfect, beautiful, pink, <laughs> crying, laughing, gurgling little baby that so willingly came into this experience just ready to be loved, ready to love, and ready to just move forward. And now just imagine that baby just growing, growing at such a fast speed, an enormous speed, going all the way through the toddler years, all the way into grade school, and just fast forwarding through all of those grades, getting into high school, going right through those grades, graduating, jumping out into the world, maybe college, maybe a job, maybe a, a, a gap year, maybe traveling, whatever it is you're doing. And then finally, settling into that which gave you passion and excitement. And now just let that just fast forward, just let it race, see all the different clothes and outfits you wore, the people you were with, the relationships you were a part of, and just allow it to take you right here, right now. And somehow it is just speedily moved forward and dropped you right here in this room right now, today. That baby, that perfect child that came into this world is sitting right here today. And everything that was possible then is possible now. And the conscious mind that is in that child is now in this man or woman. And what that child is saying is, let's do it. Let's live. Let's do everything we came here to do. There is no limit to what we can do. I've known this since day one. And so I say no to anything that could possibly stop me from knowing this truth. And so now take another deep breath. Open your eyes and just look around. Look around the whole room. Look up, look at the ceiling, look at the drip here, the drop that's going into the bucket. Everything is possible. You have an efficacy of mind that allows you to decide where your life is going. I live my greatness on demand, meaning I decide. Here's my greatness, and I am demanding it of me, not of a universe. I'm not going to argue with the universe and say, give me, give me, give me, give me. You heard what Will said. Wouldn't it be great if all of us, there's only one generation for me. There's not the this generation, and that generation, X, Y, Z, X, D, B, whatever. There's not. There's one generation. It's every person that's alive on the planet today is the generation right now. That's what I believe. That's the generation. And why... Don't we just all band together and decide to literally give, give. Because if we really let that little baby take everything it is and infuse all of that pure potential and possibility into each one of us and let it bubble up, we can't help but give. If you saturate and fill yourself with the passion of the universe, as Ernest Holmes says, with the fire in the belly, if you let all of that come up and live you, literally live you, you cannot be trying to get because you will be way too busy allowing it through. And that's what it means to be this greatness on demand. 
knowing and infusing every bit of yourself into this understanding that what I think I become. The great Buddha said it. What I think I become, my mind is my greatest tool. So I offer you this week to pay attention to anything you need to say no to. And then say no with such power that that no is literally ensconced with a K and a W. And you understand it's the great knowing of the universe that allows you to say no to what you need to say no to and to know the truth of who you are. Because guess what? You are greatness on demand. You are God. All of it. The entire ocean in a drop. It is yours now to let that drop literally explode into the universe. Because that's who you are and that's what you can do. Namaste. <laughs>